All right, thanks for joining me for another vlog on living in uncertain times. And this past week and a half has gone from uncertain to actually chaotic. Even as I shared with you on the vlog last week, the movement toward chaos had already started. We know the details. George Floyd who died in police custody. And the event was actually caught on video for the whole world to see the abusive containment of Floyd and until he died. And that was a spark, but the fireworks, and literally the fireworks, was yet to come. And, and so our nation and the whole world, for that matter, was dried wood, in effect, ready for that spark, and it came with the death of George Floyd. Fervent protests of police brutality was, has erupted and continued throughout the nation and even across the world. There have been many cries for a stop to police brutality for a long time and, and police deception, especially against African Americans. But this time, well, well, this time it feels different, doesn't it? The riots, the looting, the violence, they've largely been in conjunction with that fervor, but it has been mostly separate from the large protests for justice, which have been primarily peaceful, even though they have been um, quite fervent. Many of those who have done the worst damage, in fact, have been tied to groups almost on the opposite political and ideological spectrum from those protesting. And, and we wonder, why is this happening? They have found an opportune moment to act out against the establishment and just create chaos. They have demonstrated uh, their, uh, the base human rage that is, is ongoing right now. Some of it is caused, I think, by COVID-19. Some of it has been because of the terrible divisive environment in the United States and really around the world at this moment in time. Some of it's tied to their own feeling of wrongful treatment at some point in time. And, and some just is from people's desire to show their power to do whatever they want with no one to stop them. But the violence even though I'm very careful, I do not tie it directly to the protests, but the violence demonstrate to us though, that this cannot be ignored. I believe all things are under God's sight and all things are used by God for God's plans and for God's purpose. Might this be the moment in time when real change finally takes place? Might this be the moment in time when we graduate another step in the fight against racism. When we acknowledge our own ongoing sin of elitism that continues to almost silently within ourselves fester under the surface, can God take this time of chaos and transform it into a new day and open up new possibilities that have been fought against in the past? But the page may be turning. I believe so. Good change is always instigated by God. Change can be extremely hard, and, and it usually involves loss, and it involves giving up. And this certainly is happening right now. In uncertain times, and especially in chaotic times, we must, well, we must be silent before God. We must listen with our ears of how we are to respond in, in our mind and our spirit to the Lord. How are we to act in the midst of this uncertainty and this midst of this chaos? And then we need to act. Ask God to show you what racism still lives in you. Ask God to reveal to you how you see yourself as somehow better than certain other people whether it's because of economics or whether it's because of skin color or whether it's because of clothes and that they wear or way other people's talk, whatever it might be that, that makes you feel like you are superior. Come to the determination that you will only treat others the way you expect and desire to be treated yourself. May this time of chaos be a wake-up call really for every one of us we must listen to what God reveals to you and to me, to us, and then ask God to help us change how we look at and how we treat other human beings. You might be surprised. <laughs> Someone else might be changing how they think about and act towards you. Peace and towns, Pastor Wes.